Well, like most of you, I was glued to the screen on the weekend to watch the launch of Crew Dragon DM2 carrying astronauts to the International Space Station. It was an amazing accomplishment, and here's a video all about it. On Sunday, May 31st, 2020, a SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule carrying astronauts Robert Behnken and Douglas Hurley docked with the International Space Station. This was a tremendous accomplishment for SpaceX and NASA, giving the United States the capability of launching its own astronauts and no longer relying on its Russian partners. This was the fifth time that US astronauts went into orbit on a new kind of space vehicle, following in the footsteps of Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, and the space shuttle. The flight was originally supposed to take off on Wednesday, May 27th, but the unpredictable Florida weather forced a last minute scrub, rescheduling the launch for Saturday. Although there were thunderstorms on the horizon, the weather above Cape Canaveral launch site was good enough to launch. The astronauts put on their SpaceX manufactured pressure suits, hopped into their Tesla Model X shuttle and made the short trip to pad 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. This is the same launch pad that Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin used for their Apollo 11 launch to the moon in 1969, not to mention 11 other Apollo missions and 82 space shuttle launches. Bankin and Hurley, I refuse to say Bob and Doug in my Canadian accent, rode the elevator up to the 25 meter walkway. They were strapped into their seats and waited for the rest of the countdown. SpaceX Dragon, we're go for launch. Let's light this candle. This time, there were no delays. At 3.22 p.m. Eastern Time, the SpaceX Crew Dragon lifted off the pad, carrying the astronauts into space. The upper stage separated from the booster stage, which returned and landed on SpaceX's floating drone ship. The upper stage continued their climb up to their orbital altitude, and then, Crew Dragon began its 19-hour journey to meet the International Space Station. As the spacecraft was approaching the station, Hurley announced that they had named the spacecraft Endeavour. They docked to the station at 10.16 a.m. Eastern Time on Sunday and were welcomed on board to become the newest members of Expedition 63 by NASA astronaut Chris Cassidy and Russian cosmonauts Anatoly Ivanishin and Ivan Wagner. When DM2 returns to Earth, the entire mission will prove an end-to-end -end test of the SpaceX transportation system, demonstrating the launch, orbit, docking, and landing of the Crew Dragon system. It'll allow for NASA certification of the launch system as part of the commercial crew program. But the decision to shift away from the space shuttle was made 15 years ago when NASA Administrator Mike Griffin set aside $500 million of the agency's budget to help develop a new privately built spacecraft system. Originally called the Commercial Orbital Transportation Services, or COTS, demonstration, it was initially awarded to SpaceX and Rocketplane Kistler in 2006. Unlike other NASA spacecraft development, funds were only awarded as the contractors completed milestones, and unlike other programs, NASA wouldn't take ownership of the vehicles and infrastructure they produced. The developers were encouraged to get private financing for their projects and were free to market their services to other clients. Just a year or so into the project, Rocketplane Kistler was unable to meet its obligations for the commercial program and was forced to withdraw. In 2010, NASA developed a new program called the Commercial Crew Program, providing contracts to Boeing, SpaceX, Sierra Nevada, Blue Origin, United Launch Alliance, and Paragon Space Development for spacecraft and launch vehicles and equipment. Because of the dangerous design of the space shuttle, the vehicle was retired in 2011, leaving the United States with no way to carry astronauts to the International Space Station. They turned to Russia with its Soyuz capsules to provide the service, paying upwards of $80 million per seat for a trip to the station. Development of commercial crew continued, with the final vehicles becoming SpaceX's Crew Dragon and Boeing's CST-100 Starliner. When NASA announced that they would be hiring private firms to provide the launch services, Roscosmos director Dmitry Rogozin said it was more likely they'd get the job done with a trampoline. And that's why SpaceX CEO Elon Musk announced this week 
that the trampoline is working. Under this new program, NASA would be paying Boeing $90 million per seat for Starliner launches and $55 million per seat to SpaceX for Crew Dragon launches. From 2015 through 2020, we saw tests of both Starliner and Crew Dragon as they tested out their pad abort systems and Crew Dragon tested its in-flight abort system. In March 2019, Crew Dragon was the first to reach the International Space Station with its DM-1 flight, delivering supplies but no astronauts, and then returning safely five days later. Boeing's flight test happened in December 2019, but the spacecraft failed to reach the required orbit to dock with the International Space Station. It did return safely back to Earth, but NASA will require Boeing to conduct more tests before it's able to carry humans. And so this week's launch was the culmination of almost 15 years of effort by SpaceX to deliver on the promise of human spaceflight. Now that Crew Dragon has successfully delivered astronauts to the International Space Station, what comes next? I'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank James Osgerby, Bren Enabusk, Jacob, Mandy Slutsker, Matt, and the rest of our 843 patrons for their generous support. Want our videos early with no ads? Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today. What comes next? SpaceX is now building US Crew Vehicle 1, also known as Crew 1. This will be the first fully operational Crew Dragon flight, carrying four astronauts to the International Space Station as early as August 30th, 2020. It'll be commanded by Michael Hopkins and joined by Victor Glover, Jax's Sochi Noguchi, and Shannon Walker. And assuming that goes well, we should see regular NASA flights for the foreseeable future. The next flight, Crew-2, is expected to head to the station in 2021. SpaceX is also free to provide orbital services to anyone who wants it. And recently, Space Adventures announced that they would be using Crew Dragon for various tourist flights to space. An upcoming mission will carry four passengers into orbit at a higher distance than private citizens have ever flown and future paying tourists will fly Crew Dragon to the privately built Axiom Space Station module, due for launch in 2024. Boeing is working through a long list of fixes to its Starliner CST-100 vehicle, and they're expected to make another test flight around October 2020. If that goes well, we should see a crewed flight happen in the first quarter of 2021. I know it feels like a step back, Crew Dragon, on top of its Falcon 9, looks very similar to the original Mercury or Gemini rockets that launched the earliest U.S. astronauts to space half a century ago. And this is after the United States' three-decade adventure with the space shuttle, which was designed to be largely reusable. But this time, it's different. NASA didn't design and build this rocket or capsule. They're purchasing flights from a commercial provider at a significant discount from what they were paying for Russian Soyuz flights. The booster rocket returns safely after each flight, and the entire system is 80% reusable. The system is safer, more reusable, more economical, and should drive the cost of space flight down, freeing up budget for, I don't know, sending humans to the moon at the same time. Seriously though, we are really seeing a brand new era in human spaceflight, an exciting next step before we get to the dream of fully reusable rockets like SpaceX's Starship. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here, support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and I send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. Did you know that all my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format so that you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up on your audio device? Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, and I'll put a link in the show notes. Both Crew Dragon and Starliner depend on their abort systems for keeping astronauts safe on the pad and while they're climbing up to orbit. We did a whole episode on the history of abort systems, which you might enjoy, and you can watch that now.